Previously, we defined work as the means by which we can move energy into or out of a system by pushes or pulls. In other words, work is forces adding or subtracting energy from the system. Let's define it mathematically now. Work is a force that is applied through a distance. Okay, uh, it's time to talk about units for energy. The units for energy that you're probably the most familiar with are calories, right? If you look on a package of food, uh, then you'll see calories on it. It says, uh, my Chipotle burrito uh, has a thousand calories. Okay, what does that mean? Uh, it means that there are a thousand calories of chemical energy stored in that Chipotle burrito. In science, we typically use joules for our unit of energy. The SI unit for energy is a joule, and a joule is a kilogram meter squared per second squared, so it is a compound unit. A joule turns out to be a pretty small amount of, of energy. Uh, there's 4,190 joules in a food calorie. Um, so that means, you know, there's 4 million something joules in my Chipotle burrito. So a joule is a fairly small amount of energy. So uh, we're going to ease into work here. This is not the full-on definition, so be a little bit careful with this one here. This is for work done by a force that's in the same direction as the displacement. And so we see here an, a, a picture here of a, a wind surfer, and here the wind surfer is stopped. The wind exerts a force on his sail, and later he is moving. Therefore, if the system is my wind surfer, then the system's kinetic energy is increasing. How? Because energy's been added to the because energy has been added to the system by a force, a force pushing on that sail. How much work was done? Well, it's equal to the magnitude of the force times the displacement, times how far that force acted on. And so you can see this kind of makes sense. If I push harder, I do more work and I create more kinetic energy. If I apply the same force for a longer distance, then I do more work and I can create more kinetic energy. Okay, so that kind of makes sense, right? It's a force times a distance. Now, there's no reason to say that all forces should be parallel to the displacement, right? And so we need to have an equation that includes the possibility that the force and the displacement are not in the same direction. So if we have a situation like that, say a generic force like this, at some angle with respect to the displacement, then what we'd say is that the perpendicular component of that force does no work, and the parallel component of the force does do work. And so we pick out the parallel component, that is F cosine theta, and then we say, hey, our work is simply F D cosine theta. Again, this perpendicular component does no work. Now that's a little bit tricky. Um, how can one force do work if it's parallel to the displacement and another force, the same force even maybe, does no work if it's perpendicular to the displacement? Well, not all forces do work in the sense of physics definition of work. So uh, to kind of help us wrap our brain around that, let's say that one day you broke down in the street out there on uh, 10th Avenue, you broke down and uh, you're in the middle of the road, there's traffic, it's stressful. But that's okay. Your physics professor saw you and, and, and is going to help you, right? And, and so I run over and I, I push real hard on your car. I've been working out. <sighs> so I'm pushing on Okay, so I come over and I push real darn hard like that, like that. How stoked are you about my help? Not. Nah, you're not. You know, because I can never get the car to go that way by pushing in this way, right? And, and you know that. You knew that before you took physics class. You didn't have to take physics class to know that if you want to get your friend out of the road and they're stuck, that you don't push sideways on their door. You knew that. But now we know, in terms of physics, why, right? Why? Because this force is perpendicular to the displacement you want to go, right? To the direction you want to go. That is perpendicular. And so therefore, this force does no work on the car. It does not change the kinetic energy of the car, which is ultimately the goal. If you're stuck in the middle of the street, you need to change your kinetic energy. A force perpendicular to your displacement will never do that. Okay, so hopefully that convinces you that it is only a force that is parallel to the um, 
displacement that creates any any work that does any work. But another one that can be tricky for some students is I'm going to push on my chalkboard. I'm pushing really hard. Am I doing work? No, I'm not doing any work on the chalkboard. Why? Because there's no distance, right? There's no motion here. Yes, I'm pushing in that direction, but there's no displacement. There's no motion, right? The, the force is not moving through a distance. And so I am not doing any work. Well, a lot of times when, when, when students realize that, they think, well, then this is, this is just, uh, like, I'm going to get tired eventually, right? Even if I'm not pushing that hard, eventually I will get tired. So I'm burning calories. I'm burning more calories pushing than I would be if I wasn't. So what gives? Well, our muscles just act in sort of a, a complicated way, right? And so I am using ATP energy in my cells right now, even though I'm not doing physics work. This is not a biology class, and we're not going to go into the details of how your muscles work. But... Suffice to say, I'm not trying to say you're not going to get tired here, right? What I am saying is that I'm not changing the kinetic energy of the board, right? I am not moving energy into or out of the system if the system is my chalkboard. So push though I might, if it never moves, I'm never changing its energy. And therefore, I'm not doing any work, okay? So again, work is how we move energy into or out of a system by pushes or pulls. If the energy of the system didn't change, then I probably didn't do any work. Let's do a quick example. In each of these boxes, with masses noted, they are pulled for 10 meters across a floor, a frictionless floor, by a noted force. Which box experiences the largest change in kinetic energy? So you'll see here they have different masses, and we are applying different forces for the same distance. And notice that since they're moving across the floor, my force and my displacement will be parallel in all situations. Why don't you give it a thought, uh, select your choice, and I will see you on the other side. Okay, so let's call on the work, kinetic, the work energy theorem. So the work energy theorem says that work changes the energy of the system. Well, what kind of energy are we creating in this system? Well, there's no friction, so we're not creating any thermal energy. It's not going uphill, so we're not creating uh, any gravitational potential energy. There's no springs or bow and arrows, so we're not creating any elastic energy. We are creating kinetic energy. Since the force is parallel to the displacement, The displacement is the same everywhere, or for all four, five choices, the displacement is the same. That means the greatest force does the greatest change in kinetic energy. D is the biggest force. The mass doesn't matter. Right? Now, I haven't given you an equation for the kinetic energy yet, but the mass would affect which one of these might be going the fastest, right? So this one might not be going the fastest. We'd have to do the math to see. Um, but it definitely has the greatest amount of kinetic energy. And you can see that the mass just doesn't show up here if we're only concerned with the change in kinetic energy. How about this one? I swing a ball around my head at a constant speed uh, in a circle with circumference 3 meters. What is the work done on the ball by the 10 Newton tension force in the string during one revolution of the ball? Again, give it a shot. I'll see you on the other side. Okay, um, let's draw a quick picture to help wrap our brain around this. So, there's a top view of my ball. And at any given point, its velocity is tangent to the circle, right? So that's the direction it's going. And since that's the direction of its velocity, that's also the direction of its displacement, isn't it? Now, what direction is the force? What direction is the force? Well, the force is, as we've learned, directed towards the center of the circle. Because a force directed towards the center of the circle creates a centripetal acceleration, which is the name for the acceleration that this ball has. What is the angle between F and the displacement at any given instant? It is 90 degrees. Recall that the work is equal to F D cosine of theta. What is the cosine of 90 degrees? Zero. This 
string does no work on the ball. Well, that's weird. It's doing something that's changing its direction, yes. But is it speeding the ball up or slowing it down? No. Notice it's a constant speed, right? So we're not changing the kinetic energy. Are we changing the potential energy? No, it's a horizontal circle. So the potential energy isn't changing. No, the energy of the system is not changing. So I'm not doing any work on the system. The math tells us that, but also this notion of and as work, work is the change in the energy of the system also tells us that. Right? So similar to me pushing on the blackboard, I'm not changing the energy of the system, so I'm not doing any work. I'm also not going through any distance, so I'm not doing any 